I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure that's a debut that Jackson Rutledge will most likely forget. Like, seriously. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And if you haven't already, check out our show's YouTube page, and that is at Locked On Nationals. You can search it there and hit that subscriber button. And of course, for the everydayers out there, you know who I am. I'm Ryan Clary. You can catch me over on Twitter at Ryan Clary11, as I am a passionate Nationals guy, you could say. And we like talking about this Washington Nationals squad. So we take on game four later on in today's show as my light drops in that first segment there. You may have heard that. That's fine. You may have seen that over on YouTube if you hit that subscriber button. Later on in today's show, obviously, Josiah Gray is going to try to bounce back after having a nice week and a half off. Will he make this bounce back against a Pittsburgh Pirates squad? We'll discuss that later on. And also, this time, about a few months ago, we kind of expected that James Wood would have been up at this time. I think a lot of people were expecting that. But as we know, he's still down in double A, and it's not bad. He's still been putting up really good numbers. But what is the possibility that the top 10 prospect, one of the best outfielding prospects in all of baseball, makes his major league debut in 2023. There's only a few weeks left, but still, there's a possibility. We'll discuss that a little bit later on, but let's start off with the number 13 prospect, according to MLB.com, Jackson Rutledge, making his major league debut yesterday. And if you didn't catch the joke, I said he may not remember this one. Literally, and figuratively, and literally, I, the reason why I say that, we all know what happened. Drew Miles throwing down to second base, who another has been an impressive prospect this season. Drew Miles nailed Jackson Rutledge, who is six foot nine, in the head on a throw down to second base yesterday. I mean, can you make that up for your major league debut? You get nailed in the head in your first game. I mean, here's the thing. One, like, it's it's okay. Jackson Rutledge is okay as far as we know. He was not taken out of the game. He seemed fine, but he got drilled, man. I mean, that kind of just goes to show you what his night was about because that's how it started, for being honest. He figuratively got drilled in the head with the way that the Pirates were kind of just teeing off on him. And really, here's the thing. When it comes to debuts, you never really know what to expect. It's as simple as that. But even then, most of the time, these are when the wacky, really kind of weird scenarios come out. Because in that first inning, when Jackson Rutledge first got up there, it was a tough go for it. You start off with a single. You start off 3-0 in that count as well. You work your way back up to a full count, and then you give up that leadoff single. And then the second batter comes up, single. Then an RBI double. Then an RBI single. Then you get a pop-out. Then you get an RBI single again. RBI single again, strikeout, fly out. That was nine batters faced in inning number one for Jackson Rutledge. It was a tough one. Giving up those four earned runs there right off the bat, it was not a good start for Jackson. And I feel for that because that sucks. You've been waiting your entire life to make this debut. You're going up against a Pittsburgh Pirates offense that really just isn't all too good at this moment in time. You still have Brian Reynolds, and Reynolds, as we know, took advantage of that, getting three hits out of his four at-bats the other night, having his OPS now above 800, which he hasn't really done since the middle of the summer. He's been a little bit cool lately, but when you have that veteran presence like Reynolds, you're going to get some not-so-easy situations that the Nationals were put in. And as you've seen with Jackson Rutledge, he's got the stuff. But here's also the thing is that When you look down at what he threw yesterday, it wasn't the most 
flawless performance. It wasn't the most uh, great performance you could ever say out there. Because Jackson Rutledge, he has struggled in AAA. And I think that's also a part of this equation that we should probably highlight before kind of throwing him into the fire. He wasn't absolutely killing it down at AAA. This guy is still someone who had his ERA in the fours, and he was also still on a little bit of a pitch count. But last night, you saw kind of the the potential that he brings to the table, throwing five different pitches yesterday with his four-seam fastball registering 34 pitches, his slider 20 pitches, his sinker 17 pitches, his changeup 16 pitches, and only his curveball, which was only three pitches. Now, the curveball part of this kind of surprised me just a little bit <clears throat> because what I have heard from him down in AAA and really down in AA and even Fredericksburg last year was he was throwing his curveball a lot more effectively and that's kind of a pitch that I expected to take a little bit of a step up. And we also saw Mike Rizzo talk about his changeup on yesterday's interview with the Sports Junkies. He only threw that 16 times in yesterday's game. And we all know it wasn't all too effective. But in that time frame as well, here's the kind of two things that I noticed with Rutledge. One, his fastball command just seemed to be not all too great. You've seen him miss a lot down in that middle, middle portion of the plate giving up that one home run. Obviously, that wasn't really what we wanted to see, but he missed his fastball command. And I think that's kind of what we saw with a lot of rookies this year with the Nationals as far as pitching goes. You saw Jake Irvin kind of struggle with his fastball command early on, and now we're seeing it with Jackson Rutledge in his debut. But he had a nice little mix of that because, again, he threw his four-seam fastball 34 times, a slider 20 times, a sinker 17 times, a changeup 16 times, and a curveball three times. That is a pretty deep arsenal, and that is something that you could work with because also he actually has some really solid stuff, I thought. I thought he had really good movement on the slider. I thought the sinker was really effective for him as well. But even then, probably his best overall pitch, in my opinion, from yesterday was probably his slider. And even then, he kind of... He did get rocked around with it, but his fastball had a 571 slug against it yesterday and a 429 batting average, and his slider had a 500 batting average against it. So here's the thing with Jackson. I'm not all too concerned with this rough debut. It happens. It's going to happen, and it's going to continue to happen in young pitchers making that jump from the minors to the bigs. It's always been this way, and it likely will always be this way. So when you talk about Jackson Rutledge, no one should be sounding any alarms. Now, while, yes, in 2019, when we drafted Jackson Rutledge, you would have expected him to be on this starting rotation staff in 2023 and hopefully being relatively effective because that's kind of what the expectation was for him. Even then, some people thought he could have made his debut in 2022 last year, but he was down in low A Fredericksburg, and he wasn't doing all too great, to be honest there. But the moral of the story from yesterday was, yes, his debut was rough. It was, but it's not the end of the world. It happens. And I think this is just me. I'm sure people can find the humor in it as well. But getting nailed in the head just feels like there is something there that like you you can't just be normal after getting drilled in the head off how who knows how fast that ball came off Drew Miles Sands. Because I think that was kind of the moral of the story from Jackson Rutledge yesterday. But with that said, Drew Milas did hit his first career home run, 405 feet. It was a solid, nice little knock for the kid. And again, your first career home run right after you nailed Jackson Rutledge in the head. I mean, you just can't make these things up. So good for Drew Milas. Jackson Rutledge, hopefully he gets another crack at this this season. I think he could with Mackenzie Gore on the IL now. I think he deserves another shot. Hopefully coming at home against a little bit of a slower team, but we all know this second half schedule for the Nationals is not all too pretty because after this, you're going up to Milwaukee and then you have the Chicago White Sox coming to home is where he would slot in there. So actually not that bad of a performance if you can get that. But then after that, you go into Atlanta, Baltimore, and Atlanta, the two best teams in all of baseball. You don't really want to be throwing Jackson Rutledge out there at that moment in time. But again, let me reiterate, Debut, not all too many expectations for him. Still on a pitch limit, still on a pitch count. You don't really have to look at this and say, I'm concerned. It's his first start ever. 
And I think that's really what should be the story of yesterday's game. Alongside Drew Miles hitting his first career home run and Dominic Smith going yard as well. He's kind of starting to turn it around as a reason at the plate, getting a little more power, getting that launch angle up. And that is what you want to see from the first baseman who is a stud defensively. And thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day. The Nationals play the Pirates today at 1235 Eastern time. And of course, you can catch Josiah Gray and every pitch in the Nationals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Nationals there. And before we get into the James Wood discussion here, let's kind of set the table for it because we all know that James Wood, the expectation, at least for a lot of us, including myself, I kind of thought James Wood would be in the majors come this September. I thought that he would be getting the opportunity and maybe even having a chance to compete for an opening day roster spot this spring training. But right now he's still down in double A, but we know with this Nationals organization, they like to move guys up pretty quick after getting that promotion at double A. So is it still in the realm of possibility that we do see number seven prospect in all of baseball, James Wood up in the bigs? in 2023 i'll answer that question and tell you why i think what i think but before we do that let me tell you guys about our friends over at ebay motors and guys passion drive and patience what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're in the speed power or style ebay motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebay.com slash motors. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Now we get back into it as James Wood, the top 10 prospect in all of baseball, someone who has been raved about by myself and as well as the national baseball community. He is still down in double A at right now as the 20 year old that he is or 21. And from the next few days here, James Wood is still again down in double A, but it's not because of what he hasn't really done there. James Wood has been really good so far. And what we have really kind of seen from him so far. And in my opinion, what's been really highlight worthy as far as James Wood goes is that the fact that he has been really good at the plate so far this season. And now you may look at it and say, well, what has really stood out to you this season? Well, we all know we've talked about this when we talk about Brady House and James Wood and all the other prospects in baseball. People's slugging percentages have always been really low when it comes to Wilmington and the Blue Rocks and their stadium up there in Wilmington, Delaware. Well, James Wood kind of just said, that's cute. Hit eight home runs there in 42 games. They bumped them up to double A. And since then, That's kind of when his power has really taken off, in my opinion. Hitting 17 home runs now in 84 games, that's a tick above what he was doing in Wilmington, and that is at a much more baseball hitter-friendly yard. And so far this season, in 126 games, he's got 25 home runs and 86 RBIs and 18 stolen bags as well, which is something that is really wildly impressive. But the question is, is what should James Wood do at this moment in time? It's not really what should he do. It's what should the Nationals do with him? Should they call him up? And well, I'm here to say probably not at this moment in time. And the reason why I say that is because, number one, what is the rush when it comes to this? Now, while you may look at other prospects in the past, Victor Robles, for an example, someone who's also kind of been at the top of the food chain for a while in that Nationals farm system, the similar way that James Wood has been over the last year or so. So when you talk about him, Victor Robles came up in 2017 for a cup of coffee, 2018 as well. And then in 2019 was when he was cut loose, made the opening day roster and was your starting center fielder on opening day. So with James Wood, I would kind of expect something similar to that. But at this moment, what is the rush for? 
Because I also think Victor Robles was kind of in this category of where people wanted to see him in the majors. They wanted to see him even back in 2017 when he was only 20 years old. And even 2018 when the Nationals weren't really playing for all too much that season. It's the last year of Bryce Harper, Juan Soto gets the call up, and we all know what happened then. But with James Wood, this is a little different in my mind. Because this Nationals team, they're not really competing for anything at this moment in time. And if you don't believe that James Wood is healthy enough, not healthy enough, sorry. If you don't believe that James Wood is really ready to take that next step, even in a AAA before going into the majors, then I wouldn't either. And the reason why that is, is because his numbers compared to high A Wilmington, which he killed the baseball and compared to what it is in double A, isn't all that great. You've kind of seen the drop off a little bit. You've seen a little hike in strikeouts as well, because in double A, he struck out 119 times in 84 games compared to his 49 strikeouts in 42 games down in Wilmington. And also in that time frame as well, he's got 39 walks in 84 games compared to 26 walks in 42 games. So his strikeout rate is up compared to his walk rate being down just a little bit. And I think when you're talking about James Wood, number one, when you're six foot seven, obviously the strike zone is going to be bigger. It's going to be a lot bigger, in fact. So that adjustment in itself, as you kind of work your way up in the ranks, there's going to be an adjustment period with that with James Wood. And so with him in particular, I would like to see him get some time in AAA as well, because I do think that's something that will happen this season. I do expect to see James Wood in AAA at least for some point of this season, because it's September 14th. In fact, I would have expected for him to be in AAA probably last week at this moment. I really would have. But the reason why he hasn't, in my opinion, is because one, his barrel contact, his contact rate is down just a little bit with the strikeout rate going up. And that's kind of something that with young guys, it's not crazy to see. This isn't something super unordinary, but it is noteworthy considering the fact that this guy, again, is a top 10 prospect in all of baseball. You don't want to really want to set him up for failure because when I look back at those 2017 and 2018 seasons when you call up Victor Robles at the end of the year that's kind of what it was like a lot in my opinion you kind of set Victor Robles up for a little bit of failure and I also don't really like this yo-yo thing that people do with prospects especially top prospects bringing them up and then just to bring them back down the following season and then that for the entirety of the season like we saw in 2018 with Victor Robles now while he did have some injuries that year. I also think it was a little bit premature to bring him up at that moment. Now, the back end of 2018 when he was there, yes, that's when you do it. If you believe he is ready, if you believe he is healthy, make the call and do all that. But with James Wood in this specific example, with his numbers drop off just a little bit from high A to double A, I want to see what he can do in triple A. And if he does do something in AAA, even if it's just for a week, if he's killing the baseball, if he's not striking out a lot, if he's taking his walks and doing that in limited fashion, then I'd be okay to see James Wood for the last week. Just see what he can do. But I also don't want this thing where you're leaving James Wood up in the majors and you're just riding him on the bench for a little bit. If you're going to call up James Wood, it's going to be to be your starting center fielder. It's going to be a prominent role in this offense for the season, for the remainder of the season, which is only a few weeks, obviously. So with James Wood, it's just a little tricky in my mind because it's not as easy as it once was when calling up prospects, in my opinion, because this is just my belief when it comes to this. I don't like the fact that teams bring up their young prospects just to have that cup of coffee, just to have that opportunity in the majors and just kind of get a look at them now while I think it's beneficial for some of these guys but when you have someone who's as prominent as James Wood I wouldn't really take the risk there when I call up James Wood to the majors at this moment in time I want to call up James Wood to stay in the major leagues I don't really think that's the case at this moment he's 20 just turning 21 years old he's still really young Dylan Cruz is older than James Wood at this moment. Yes, that's kind of how crazy it is when you talk about some of these young outfielding prospects. So James Wood is in that category of someone who you could make the argument 
for him being in the majors and just getting a cup of coffee and then starting the next year in AAA and having him work his way up to the bigs, which I still think is a very real possibility here. But what I would do and what I think the Nationals will probably do is have him go up to AAA within the next week or so and have him finish off there and then see what he can do come spring training because he will certainly be probably battling for an opening day roster spot. And if he kills the ball in spring training, if he has good numbers, if he's playing solid defense, which his defense has improved this year, by the way, then I think that's when you could see James Wood making the call up to the majors and making that jump and really just seeing that progress. Because I think James Wood also has even a little bit more in his tank. I think he's got a better hit tool than what we have seen so far in double A. But as we know, you're going up against really good pitching. You're going up against the Bowie Bay Sox, who a, a team, by the way, which is loaded with pitching talent. And then you're also going up against the Richmond Flying Squirrels a lot, another team that is loaded with pitching talent. So they've had to go through a lot this season. But with James Wood sitting here today, I would not make the call up for the 2023 season. And that's just the way that I think of it. That's the way that I believe that you should build your prospects up. You want to make sure they're ready before just throwing them into the fire. Because as we've seen in the past with Victor Robles, and as well as some other key prospects, you've thrown them in the fire a little bit too early, and it just never really panned out. I don't want that to happen with James Wood, because I think he is a very special talent, and he fits the mold for today's game of baseball in 2023, entering 2024, with that power bat and that speed tool as well on the bases. Thank you all for making Locked On Nets your first listen every day. The Nationals play the Pirates today at 1235 Eastern Time in Josiah Gray, and as well as the Washington Nationals. They're both going to try to bounce back after losing last night's game, and after Josiah Gray has had 11 days off since his last start. Catch every pitch in the Nats' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Nationals when you get there. And before we get into previewing that sort, will Josiah take this step up? Will he kind of get back into his early summer form, early spring form? We'll discuss that and preview that start after I tell you guys about our friends over at Jace Medical. And guys, when I talk to you guys about Jace Medical, this is what I want you to do because Jace is simple as this. Modern medical care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment you need. Jace Medical is your solution. And guys, just fill out their online form and one of Jace Medical's board certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate. Then Jace will send your prescriptions to one of your their partner pharmacies where your order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. You can also send your physician a message for answers to treatment-related questions anytime. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using my code Locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. <clears throat> now we get back into it as Josiah Gray is going to try an attempt to make this kind of step up that we've been waiting to see so far since the beginning of August. As we all know, as we have all highlighted, it's been a tough go for it for Josiah Gray as of recent. But when you go up against this kind of lackluster offense with the Pittsburgh Pirates and what they really haven't been able to do all year long, you're going up against guys with not a lot of power, not really a lot of bat to ball skills, and really an offense that has completely floundered over the second half of the season. And as well as in O'Neill Cruzless Pittsburgh Pirates team, which has not been all too fun to watch so far this season. But the obvious one is here, Brian Reynolds. We saw what he can do yesterday against Jackson Rutledge with those fastballs, with those sliders missing in the zone. He's going to do damage with it. So I look at his matchup there. That is one that I want to see Josiah Gray not really avoid because I want to see my pitchers, especially in Josiah's case, someone who should be having this breakout 2023 season. And he did have this breakout season, if we're still being honest. He was an all-star. He deserved to be an all-star. And he had the numbers to really back all those claims up. 
So with Josiah's case, I do kind of want to see you stay away from Reynolds here today. Because not only does the ball fly there out to right field, and we've seen it over the last few days with Dominic Smith nailing a home run out there that only flew about 370 feet, but it seemed like it flew forever. C.J. Abrams the other night as well, we saw that home run. Drew Milas, all these different guys, the ball can fly at PNC Park. And with Josiah Gray leading the league in home runs given up just last year, and this year he's been giving up a ton more home runs as of recent here. He's been walking a lot of guys. Stay away from those guys. Let's try to limit the damage, trust your defense, and when the Nationals do do that and kind of simplify things, I think that is when you see a much better national squad. It's just a matter of if he can do this and if he can control the uncontrollable things, and that part of this is tough. But also the Nationals, they are taken up against right-handed pitcher Mitch Keller. He's been pretty solid all year long for them. We saw yesterday a former top prospect with Quinn Priester came out of the bullpen for them. He looked solid in my opinion. He's had some a lot of rough up and downs, but Mitch Keller, in my opinion, has probably been their better pitcher all season long. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch as well for these bats. C.J. Abrams, hopefully he can really break out on this one. And as we saw yesterday with Dominic Smith hitting a home run, if he can get a hold of one tonight, that would be big. So we'll be keeping an eye out for those scrappy Nats and see if they will be making an appearance in today's ball game. And thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day. And if you've made it this far, please subscribe over on YouTube, Locked On Nationals. That's where you'll find me and as well as the show page as you get your team every single day. And, of course, the Nationals are playing today at, at 1235 against Pittsburgh Pirates up at PNC Park, the beautiful PNC Park. Catch every pitch in the Nationals' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM, on the SXM app, just search Nationals there. And of course, let's hope for a Nationals win today. See if they can split this series against the Pirates. If they can split it, I'll take it. If they lose three of four, I will not be too happy. Of course, I'll catch you on the flip side.